Okay, so we were learning digital inking within Illustrator using the blob brush. I'm working on top of just a sketch, right? And then if I feel like, <clears throat> eh, there's a, something a little amiss. Like I, I made them kind of concave there. I can use the eraser and you can double click on the eraser and just like the blob brush, you can make it pressure sensitive for size, which I have here. You can play with the angle, but the eraser you can't set to be smoother or more accurate, right? Like you can with the pencil and the blob brush. So the eraser is really just to remove. It's not even great for smoothing, right? Like cleaning up because it just takes lots of anchor points out of it. So use the pencil tool. It's like a magic um, scissors to clean up. Pull down command, see the anchor points, draw through the anchor points. And you can always use the smooth tool as well to get rid of bumpiness you don't want. So the blob brush gets you started, but then you might use other tools <laughs> to contain it. So here's what's great. I erased, and now because it's the blob brush, I don't need to make a new path. I can just extend from what I've already done, and it will blob it all together as one path, one connected path. Which is pretty great. So now that corn isn't concave anymore, right? Which carries the character through a little bit better. Same thing with this. Remember I moved these, that little tail over. And you see how they're two separate paths right now. And I would need the pathfinder to merge them. But if I just use the blob brush, because they're on the same layer, I can merge them easily just by painting through them. And now they're the same. And then I might use the pencil tool just to clean up these connections. Starting on the path and ending on the path. And then I'm going to use the blob brush to connect these two ends. Right? And then I can use the pencil tool to clean it up. So those are my favorite all around tools in Illustrator, the pencil tool and the blob brush, because I do a lot of digital inking or cleaning up scanned live traced inking or what have you, you know, for different commercial jobs. And vector line work is always preferable to raster line work because it can be infinitely sized. So for instance, this vector shape now, which is a closed path, I can stretch to fit. Right. But I actually like it a little bit smaller like this. And so instead, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make a copy, control C, of the sketch, make a new layer on top, lock the one underneath, turn it off, edit, paste in place, right? Uh, double click it and onion skin it again to 50%. And then I am actually going to shrink it to fit the text within my bubble. And I'm gonna spell alone correctly. But I still wanna ink over the top of it. But I'll make it on a new layer just for organizational purposes because text is different than character, right? So I'm gonna use the blob brush again. And try to make it look fairly hand done, but also readable.
maybe add punctuation, right? Now this is going to get colored in Photoshop. So before I save this as an EPS, as finished line work, I just look for anything I might want to tweak. Might want to close some gaps. And you can zoom in and get pretty detailed if you want. And because I'm using my tablet with my blob brush, it can be, oh, I want to be on the right layer though, sorry. can't blob them together if it's not on the same layer and if it's locked. Good. Then I can use the pencil tool smooth tool, whatever is needed. But I need to be able to see those anchors first. Whoops. Like so. And I think the blob brush will move, move between layers too. Oh, no. They have to be on the same layer. You know what? I'm just going to use Pathfinder to do it the old fashioned way. So, Pathfinder, merge those two layers together. So now everything's the text and everything else, all one clean filled vector path, which allows me to use the blob brush. To clean it up all together. Open this up. Remember, we're going to be coloring it, so don't fill in something with solid black unless you're pretty sure you want it solid black. Now, little things like this will often happen with the blob brush when you're closing circles. Just like with a real inking pen, they'll get kind of thicker at the at the ending. So I can. I can adjust for that with the pencil tool, and I can move things around. Now let's see. Yeah, I think that'll work. You can fill in little things that you know you don't want to deal with. And you can smooth out things you know you don't want to deal with. And then you're going to save it as an EPS. Okay, this text I'm not going to carry over because I'm going to use that for the next assignment. And I'm going to show you how to do type design because I want the unicorn to look different than the hand done text. I want this to look more official. Yeah, but for now, this works. Oh, maybe I'll blob brush in a little bit right here. And smooth it out. So depending on the complexity of your illustration, you can see how all of this control is really helpful. So we've got two different illustrations now. How do, what do I do? I definitely like this better than this. You know, I like the, 
the hand doing it. I'm going to try one more thing, maybe. Because I'm not sure, I'm going to copy it. This is what I often do. Lock it, turn it off, make a new layer, paste it in place, and then make the change. I'm going to try making the outside with the pencil tool a little bumpier. Just the outside of the line. More like corn. Otherwise, I think it might look like a banana. Which doesn't work for the joke quite as well. So maybe I was a little too smooth. So let's back the smoothness off a little bit and do that again. Picked up some of the bumps, but not all the all the variation I was hoping for. And remember, it's safe because I'm doing this on a copy. Ah, didn't end on the path. Because this is the side like light is hitting in the sketch, I'll keep this these bumps a little bit thinner. And these ones a little bit thicker. And I want to work on the inside of the line a little bit as well. And this really shows you this is about um, shapes, not lines. Each line is made up of, each outline is made up of an inside edge and an outside edge, which you can use separately. And that can give your illustrations a lot more variation. Because they're not logos, they don't need to be clean. We want personality, we want that kind of variation. Yeah, this is looking better. To my eye, anyway. You're the only one that needs to like your spot illustration. <laughs> I just want you to use these tools effectively. And it's a big waste, in my opinion, to use the blob brush without um, without a tablet. All right. Yeah, he's cute. Good. Okay. So now I'm going to turn off the live trace one and just save this. Even though I have all these options, if I just save this as an EPS, this is the EPS. I'm going to change its name. This is Carl, Assignment 7, Line Art, Unicorn. And shame on me because that's the first time I've saved it since I brought it in, but it didn't crash on me, so I'm good. Okay, so now, don't need this. I've got this, and I've got this EPS, the fork and bull. So because they're EPS vector files, they're going to come into Photoshop as smart layers that I can't edit. I don't want to edit them. Oh, where'd my other EPS go? Let's see. Oh, there it is. I'm going to call this one bull. And I want to pull them both to the desktop, but I can bring all the sketches uh, into my assignment seven folder. Okay, so now I'm gonna set it up for coloring. And I do that by opening up a Photoshop file. And just like we did before, 
I set up the parameters I want. 